The following may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. The People's National Party, PNP, presidential election. Mark Golding wins. Mark Golding, the St. Andrew South Member of Parliament, has been elected the sixth president of the People's National Party, PNP. Golding amassed 1,740 votes to clinch victory. His challenger, Lisa Hanna, polled 1,444 in an election where 96% of delegates turned out to vote. The results of today's presidential election were announced at the PNP's 89 Old Hope Road headquarters a short while ago. Voting, however, ended just after 3 p.m. More than 3,300 delegates were eligible to vote in today's election. Golding's victory means he will replace Dr. Peter Phillips as president of the PNP and leader of the opposition. Golding's political stock soared as a contender for leadership after Bunting, the heir apparent to Phillips, lost his Manchester central seat in the September 3, 2020 general election. Critics of the so-called risers alleged that Golding would operate as a proxy of Bunting's, but Golding denied that claim. Golding was able to build a critical mass of support from both the Rise United and one PNP factions, even convincing Phillips backer Patricia Duncan Sutherland to become his campaign spokesperson. Golding told journalists earlier that he had no worries whatsoever that he would not have been able to win in today's contest. The attorney at law said he campaigned on a unity platform to rebuild the party's base amid a 14-49 to landslide defeat in September's polls to Prime Minister Andrew Holness's Jamaica Labour Party. We need to do more for our party workers and help motivate them, and the need for a leader who can attract not just our base but also the wider population to our party, said Golding, adding that the PNP needed to become a more inclusive and engaging party. This is Lisa Hanna's second major defeat in a PNP contest. Hanna had previously run for vice president of the PNP in 2017, while calling for renewal after the party was beaten at the February 2016 polls. This time around, she ran on a promise to bring back love into the PNP. Her campaign was led by Natalie Nita as campaign manager and Donna Scott Motley as chairperson. However, she was lambasted for failing to solve years-long wounds in her St. Anne's Southeast constituency, where influential personalities openly criticized her as a divisive force. Hannah voted at the Brownstown Community College in St. Anne, where she was based for the election. When the polls opened at 10 o'clock this morning, there was a steady stream of delegates who made their way to the voting stations at 12 locations across the island, amid light but consistent rainfall. Norman Minor, chairman of the PNP Appeals and Monitoring Committee, said that the day went smoothly despite the rain. We are glad that we organized things properly and spread out the registration area and made it different from the voting area, Minor told the Gleaner. In Kingston, both teams had their camps close to the Myco University College as they kept a close watch on the day's proceedings. The Hannah camp was based at Wilmer's Boys' School, where Golding supporters were at the parking lot across from the L.P. Azar building. Flashback with Mark Golding He is a son of Professor Sir John Golding, Jamaica's first orthopedic surgeon, and Lady Patricia Golding, a career public servant. Mark is a fan of cricket and football, having played both as a schoolboy. See young Mark Golding alongside his teammates of the Mona Preparatory in 1975. Golding was educated at Mona Prep, Campion College, Marlborough College, Oxford University and University College, London. He has been married to Sandra Golding for 36 years. The two have three children. Golding is a top attorney and investment banker who was courted to join the PNP by Peter Bunting, his friend and business partner. 
He was appointed to the Senate in 2007 by Portia Simpson Miller. She also named him as the Minister of Justice in 2011. In 2017, Golding was elected to Parliament as a representative for South St. Andrew. Very heavy rains in Jamaica over the past couple of days. Uh, as you can see, there's water everywhere, and this creates a big problem. They are flooding, affecting homes, but then water that is not running also becomes breeding sites of mosquitoes. So unfortunately, look out for increased mosquitoes around. We will do our part, but it means dengue is alive and well. He's 68 years old, Gilbert Thompson, living in Planting Walk, Dallas Castle. I'm leave out for your vehicle to come pick him up, but uh, from then we're calling phone and we're not getting so the surmise that the river washing away or the gully. My stepbrother said he got the call after six for him to come and pick him up, but apparently he could not wait on my stepbrother to come and get him so he was there walking, walking and then keep calling the phone but we're not getting anything. So from last night we are search, we search until 2.30 last night. We're not seeing, we go back out this morning, we're still not seeing, so. We search out certain parts of the riverbed, and we still not see nothing. But we just surmise that the river gone with him because where, where he would walk, the gully come down. So, I think the, the gully wash him to the river. Farm Frick, white road. When the things are not there, come down from where there. When you look for it now. Look up the stream. Look up the stream. All that chuck body up there's a move. Chuck tire come down. Watch it. Go on, A river that up there, yo. Look down there, sir. Nothing can pass. Nothing, nothing, nothing can pass. People, people, nothing can pass. It's done, yes, for the evening. Right, that's it, done. Junction underwater. Wow. Bottom bottom flood out. Man. Junction flood. For 1986, this is the last time. Junction flood out. Bottom bottom flood out. We did it, we did it, Joe. You're going to be the next president of the United States. <laughs> Gravity defying Trump's future uncertain as he falls back to Earth. Donald Trump, who defied political gravity with his extraordinary rise from reality star and businessman to the presidency, has fallen back to Earth. In the end, this flurry of raucous rallies, an unprecedented turnout operation and sheer force of will could not overcome the reality of his enduring unpopularity and a raging pandemic that has killed more than 236,000 people in the U.S. and thrown millions out of work. Yet Trump's acerbic brand of politics, his Twitter taunts, his vindictive drive to punish enemies, his go-at-it-alone approach to the world made its mark across the far reaches of the government and beyond. And his better-than-expected election performance against Democrat Joe Biden suggests his impact is likely to resonate for generations in politics, governing and policy, even in defeat. 
It remains to be seen what Trump intends to do after his term ends on January 20th. Retreat to the golf course, launch his own television network, lay the groundwork to run again, and how fiercely will he try to contest his fate? I would absolutely expect the president to stay involved in politics. I would absolutely put him on the short list of people who are likely to run in 2024, Trump's former chief of staff Mick Mulvaney said in an online interview with the Institute of International and European Affairs. He doesn't like losing. When Donald Trump loses, there will never be a peaceful transition to power, said Trump's longtime lawyer and fixer turned critic Michael Cohen. He predicted Trump would do everything in his power to claim the election was stolen from him by Democrats or other forces, just as Trump tried to sow discord as the votes were being counted. Cohen said Trump was also likely aware that after losing the presidency, he might be served with a plethora of lawsuits, both federal and state. I think that due to the fact that Kamala Harris will be the next vice president, people are celebrating to the Jamaican hit song by Shaka Dimas and Pliers, Wata Bam Bam.